Why did Sega stop making consoles? Why did Sega stop making consoles? Why did Sega lose the console wars after briefly dominating the industry in the 1990s? In this video, we'll find out how Sega went from the darling of the video game console industry to stop altogether making hardware within a decade. Our channel is dedicated to making business videos that introduce business concepts that might be helpful to you. In this video, we'll utilize a classic corporate strategy framework to analyze Sega's missteps throughout its ecosystem. Sega is a Japanese video game business that rose to prominence in the 1990s. However, it went from selling nearly 31 million Sega Genesis systems at its peak in 1993 to selling only 8 to 9 million copies of its final console before shutting down its hardware empire. So what exactly happened? Porter's Five Forces In today's video, we'll use Porter's Five Forces to analyze Sega's poor management of its ecosystem which led to the demise of its console business. The Five Forces is a classic corporate strategy framework that identifies and analyzes five competitive forces that define every sector and aids in determining an industry's strengths and weaknesses. The inventor of the Five Forces framework is Harvard University's Michael E. Porter. In 1979, the Harvard Business Review published the concept for the first time. It is rumored that Professor Porter came up with this framework while participating in BCG's internal project discussions, which led to bad blood between him and BCG's then-CEO. Porter's five forces are as follows. Competitive rivalry within an industry. Threat of new entrants. Bargaining power of suppliers. Bargaining power of customers. Threat of substitute products. Competitive rivalry within an industry. How do companies in an industry compete? Game console bakers competed in the 1990s on technology with faster processors yielding more realistic graphics and audio. They lured game developers to create an attractive library of titles for consumers. They competed with ad campaigns to increase sales of the consoles and game titles. Threat of new entrants. The most attractive industries are ones with high entry barriers and low exit obstacles. Unfortunately, the video game console industry had low entry barriers for companies with strong brand names and deep pockets, which eventually led Sega to make life-threatening mistakes. Bargaining power of suppliers. In some industries, suppliers play an important role in who wins and who loses. Independent game developers help to drive console sales by offering compelling titles to consumers. Bargaining power of customers. This is a consumer's capacity to limit the profitability of an industry and determine the winners and losers. When Sega was riding high, it focused its fears and ambitions on Sony's PlayStation entry, but neglected its retail partners and end consumers. Threat of Substitute Products A substitute product employs a different technological approach to address the same economic demand. In the 1990s and early 2000s, PC and online gaming lacked the power and speed to compete with game consoles, so this last force wasn't critical to Sega's demise. Competitive rivalry within an industry. By the late 1980s, Sega had already established itself in Japan as a maker of arcade games, but their home platform, the Sega Mega Drive, was floundering in Japan. At the same time, Nintendo controlled the global video game business, with her Nintendo Entertainment System being by far the largest gaming system on the market. There was almost no competition with a renowned mustache plumber as its mascot and a family-friendly collection of video games. By the early 1990s, Nintendo controlled 94% of the 3 billion gaming business in the United States. It would have been foolhardy to oppose that power. But Michael Katz, Sega of America's president, determined that in order to compete with Nintendo, Sega needed to go west. In America, the Mega Drive was renamed the Genesis. But in order to dethrone Nintendo, Sega needed to create a mascot that could compete with Mario and readily appeal to American consumers. The business assigned artist Naato Oshima with the challenge, and he came up with Sonic the Hedgehog. Sega's Sonic games offered a considerably faster-paced, action-oriented experience that many Americans preferred over Mario games. When Sega decided to lower the price of the Genesis and offer a copy of Sonic with new console purchases, sales skyrocketed. A bank of unparalleled licensed sports titles and an edgy marketing blitz also helped the Genesis compete with the Super Nintendo Entertainment System to establish Sega as a household name. This strategy resulted in an additional 15 million copies sold. 
Sega had surpassed Nintendo in U.S. sales by 1992. Sega sales increased from $800 million to $3.6 billion between 1989 and 1993. Sega cemented its position as a major contender and a force to be reckoned with. Sega set out on overly ambitious aspirations to become the largest and most powerful video gaming force on the market, as well as a world leader in entertainment, a Japanese analog to Disney. Threat of new entrance While the game console industry had relatively high entry barriers in the 1990s for the vast majority of companies, a handful of consumer electronics and technology companies had the brand name and deep pockets to effectively enter the industry. One of them was Sony and later, another was Microsoft. Sony would threaten Sega's ambition to become a world entertainment leader. The initial PlayStation was designed as a result of a 1991 collaboration between Sony and Nintendo. At the time, the Mario family intended to manufacture a CD-based add-on system for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, so they engaged Sony to create it. At the 1991 Consumer Electronics Show, Nintendo surprised Sony by announcing a cooperation with Philips for an add-on instead. Sony didn't want to throw away its efforts on the machine, so it released a standalone PlayStation in 1994. Amid heated internal debate, Sega chairman and CEO was so anxious about Sony creating a hardware platform that he wanted Sega to launch first. They hurried the release of its new Saturn console in 1994 before the PlayStation's debut. The Sega Saturn was introduced at $400 in the United States at the E3 conference in 1995. Sega startled everyone by announcing its instant availability. It possessed great technological prowess. However, the PlayStation sported slick 3D models, while the Saturn still depended on 2D. The PlayStation just cost $299. It was a no-brainer for gamers because it was $100 less expensive than the Saturn. The Saturn first appeared in Japanese retailers in late 1994, and all 200,000 units were quickly sold out. The solid Virtua Fighter port was lauded by both fans and critics. Sega was encouraged by the Saturn's early Japanese success, but that success did not translate to North America. Sony's marketing for the PlayStation blew out the Saturns out of the water. Sega just didn't have the money to compete with Sony in advertising. Bargaining power of suppliers. Sega burned bridges with game developers and many abandoned the Saturn and later the Dreamcast, its final console. In the 1980s, when Sega was trailing Nintendo, Sega was quite helpful to anyone who wished to build for its master system. Those strong connections were maintained when the Genesis system was introduced. Then, as the Genesis approached its end, Sega attempted to extend its life with the Mega CD and a more powerful add-on unit called the 32X. Game developers began creating content for both these extensions. Just as the 32X was about to be released in Europe, Sega was set to launch the Saturn in Japan. No consumer was going to buy a Mega CD or 32X games now that the Saturn was available. Sega didn't seem to care its developers would lose money on their Mega CD and 32X investments. On the other hand, Sony was treating developers quite well. Development gear, documentation, and technical assistance were superb. Unfortunately, when the Saturn was delivered, game developers faced many problems. Documentation was incomplete. Little support was available. Some of Sega's libraries for doing certain functions in games were badly coded and slow. Saturn's twin processors made it irritating to code for. Many programmers simply ignored the second processor completely, so some games that should have run better on the Saturn ran worse than on PlayStation. Sony's marketing for the PlayStation was amazing, which helped to drive higher same-game sales for developers versus Saturn. These factors caused game creators to abandon the Saturn and later the Dreamcast in droves. Bargaining power of customers. The Saturn's unexpected release surprised retailers and consumers. Saturn was only available at select stores at launch, and those retailers that were left out retaliated by discontinuing support for Sega's goods. This violated Sega's previous generation's laborious attempts to win over merchants after Nintendo sought to keep its rivals out of the market. This haste to launch had an impact on customers, too. Loyal customers had difficulty finding a retailer with units in stock. With the surprise launch, Sega didn't have enough game titles nor quantity of software in stores to make Saturn's launch viable. Due to its premature launch, the Saturn was the only Sega console 
that did not have a distinct mainline Sonic the Hedgehog title. Clearly, having a wonderful Sonic game for the Saturn would have made a world of difference. Saturn instead debuted with a limited but decent lineup. The launch list included titles such as Daytona USA, Virtua Fighter, and Panzer Dragoon. However, beyond that window, Sega struggled to create many blockbusters and fan excitement faded when the PlayStation came in September with the promise of massive third-party support. By launching the Saturn too soon, Sega had alienated its retail partners, frustrated loyal customers by lack of console availability, and turned off other potential buyers with an underwhelming title library. Threat of Substitute Products Threat of Substitute Products was a non-factor in the gaming industry in the 1990s because PCs weren't powerful enough to perform at a similar level to dedicated gaming hardware. Dial-up modem speeds were also at a snail's pace, much too slow for online gaming. The Saturn was withdrawn two years later after selling just over 9 million units worldwide, a figure dwarfed by its rivals. The Nintendo 64 sold approximately 33 million copies globally, whereas the PlayStation sold over 100 million units. The Saturn's failure started a downward cycle that continued with the Dreamcast in 1999. Unfortunately, Sega's Dreamcast, which was a near-perfect launch and was widely regarded as a good console, was doomed from the start. Sega had broken too many bridges with developers, retailers, and consumers. Additionally, Sega didn't have the money to compete with Sony in advertising. The Dreamcast sold roughly the same number of units globally as the Saturn. The Dreamcast was scrapped, and Sega exited the console hardware market forever. This brings us to the end of this video. Do you agree with our analysis of Sega's exiting the game console industry? Were there other factors? Please comment below. Thank you for watching our video. Before you head out, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for more videos like this one. And before we sign off, here's another interesting business video you might like.